<laughs> hey, DZ kids. Hey. Why are you wearing that? I'm wearing it uh, because you know it makes you see better when you're in water. Like when when you see fish, and sea turtles, and sharks it makes you see them better. Well, we're not in water, so I think you can take it off. Okay. <laughs> well. You guys, you know, today in our lesson, we're also talking about somebody who can see things a little better. And this happens to a guy named Saul. And it's because God comes in and he alters his vision in a way that you're gonna freak out when you hear about it because you wouldn't even guess it. And he alters his vision in how he sees God. And I uh, can't wait for you guys to see the lesson and hear about it. And so right now, get ready for some cool worship. You're gonna be dancing, so get up and then uh, we'll have a cool lesson for you guys. So we'll see you after. See you Bye. later. You make the darkness run and hide. You bring the broken back to life. Only you can, only you can. You set me free from every chain. You fill my heart with songs of praise. I'm Erica, and welcome to my summer STEAM lab! Today, I'm challenging myself to some optical illusions. <laughs> Dizzy yet? And you know what these tricky little eye puzzles require? A whole lot of faith! Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So, let's give it a go! Whoa! That is wild! Wanna see? Does it look like the circles are moving? But they aren't! It's a still photo! The way the gray and the black and the white are used makes it look like it's moving! <laughs> Crazy, right? 
Do I look like I'm moving? Now, this one is easy. Okay, which of these objects is bigger than the other? Object A. Duh. All right. Wait. Object A. Right? Up. Wait a second. Wait a second. What we think we see is not what's real. And when we discover the truth, it can be shocking. <gasps> huh. Today's story is all about a guy named Saul who thought he knew it was true, but he was in for a big shock. Let's check it out. <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through nine. If anyone was set up for the good life, it was Saul of Tarsus. Greetings. Though Saul's family was Jewish, he was also born a Roman citizen. Throughout his life, he was known by two different names. You may call me Saul or Paul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with the famous Rabbi Gamaliel. Let's see. You have achieved 100% in classical literature. 111% in philosophy, and in ethics, 99%. Oh, oh, I vow to do better. Saul became a Pharisee like his father before him. He carefully studied God's law and prayed three times a day. Dear God, help me follow your laws 100% perfectly. Like the other religious leaders in Jerusalem though, Saul was caught off guard by the events that surrounded the life and death of Jesus. Good riddance. Now that fool can't try to overturn God's laws anymore. Haven't you heard? Jesus' followers says he's returned to life. They've seen Jesus? They've seen Jesus. <laughs> Ah, oh, those riffraff will slink away soon enough. Against all odds, the followers of Jesus didn't fade away. In fact, the numbers began to grow. 5,000? You're telling me that 5,000 people are following the way of a dead man? Well, technically, they think he's alive. Ugh, not helping. The religious leaders in Jerusalem did everything they could to squash the new movement. They even arrested a leader among the Jesus followers named Stephen. After telling lies about him, they dragged him outside the city. This man is a disgrace. Saul stood by and held the coats of the men who picked up stones and threw them at Stephen until they killed him. If Stephen had just let go of this Jesus nonsense, he wouldn't have had to die. It's terrible. I hear people are following the way of Jesus in other cities too. What? Inconceivable! Saul quickly became known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. When he discovered that some Jews in Damascus were following Jesus, he went straight to the high priest. Ah, this Jesus thing is spreading everywhere. I'm aware. They think he's alive. Hashtag, yup. Someone should do something. I hope you have something constructive to say. Give me letters to the synagogues in Damascus so I can arrest all the believers and bring them back here. Now you're talking. Saul set off for Damascus with the blessing of the high priest. He traveled with a group of men to arrest the believers they found. After days on the road, they neared the city. There it is. We'll make it by lunch. No, we must take time to pray. As he did three times every day, Saul stopped and turned to Jerusalem to pray. Certain God was on his side. Dear Lord, help me to catch every single one of those despicable Jesus people. Suddenly, 
a light more brilliant than the midday sun blazed down around Saul. He staggered, fell to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut against the glare. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul gasped. It felt as though the whole earth shifted beneath him. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. The men around Saul stared in horror and confusion, unable to speak. They could see no one, but heard a sound, perhaps like a roar of thunder. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Saul reeled. He struggled to his feet and finally opened his eyes. He saw nothing, only darkness. What? What's happened? You tell us. We saw the light. And you fell, and this sound, and then you said- I can't see. What? I can't see. I've been blinded. Uh, that's not good. Here, take my hand. Saul grasped the man's hand and shuffled a few steps forward. Who are you talking to? I, I think, I think it was Jesus. You heard Jesus? I heard Jesus. Saul's companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street. Uh, want something to eat? I'm not hungry. Or water? Not thirsty. For three days, Saul wrestled with himself and God. He'd come face to face with the very man he knew was dead, but discovered that Jesus was very much alive. Now blind, Saul was forced to see everything in a brand new light. a picture of a dinosaur hidden in this image. I don't Focus, 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 focus! Okay, I'll just have to have faith that there's a dinosaur in this picture because I do not see it. Speaking of, Saul literally couldn't see after his encounter with Jesus, but in a way, he could see better than he ever had before. Anyway, Saul saw everything. And Jesus made a way for everybody to be saved from their sins. After Jesus went back to heaven, he gave his followers the Holy Spirit. And then many more people believed in Jesus too. Saul wanted to stop the Jesus followers. And he really tried, <laughs> but Jesus wanted Saul to know a better way. You know, it's amazing how God has revealed himself to people all throughout history. Saul, who is also known as Paul, so Saul and Paul, or actually Saul Paul, was no exception, and neither are you. Just like God opened Saul's eyes to see the truth, he can open our eyes too. He may not appear to you in a bright light, but God can get your attention in all kinds of ways, like through nature, <sighs> or a conversation with a friend. That's really good, I like that. You're so wise. A song on the radio. God can even use your own circumstances to help you know him. And when you focus in and really see Jesus for who he is, the savior of the world, it can change how you see everything. So that's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see everything. It's like Jesus gives us brand new glasses to see out of. I can't really see out of these ones, but um, it's a different way to see. So that's exciting. These coffee beans want to wave goodbye to you.
keep on looking, looking, looking to you for where I'm going. Knowing you go there too. I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you. I fix my eyes on you. This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on looking Keep on looking, keep on looking, looking to you. I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes. eyes. You know, God took away Saul's sight in order for him to better understand who he is. And God opens our eyes a lot too, whether it be through looking at his creation and feeling closer to him, or uh, somebody coming up to you and speaking to you with love, or even just learning new things about God. In whatever way it is, uh, it's always amazing because knowing Jesus changes the way we see everything. Well, you know what time it is now? It's Remember the first time? Well, yes it is. Yes. All right, are you guys ready? I hope you've been practicing. Okay, stand up, here we go. Faith, Faith is being sure of what, what you hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 11. 1. Good job, Amy. <laughs> Good job, Good you job. guys. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. Bye. Bye.